Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Unicorn and Fairy, and I'm sipping on some peach tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting, and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, deep yellow, and fluorescent pink. And you can certainly switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, a number eight round synthetic brush, and a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up too if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link that you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same kind of canvas to the same paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the first step is I'm gonna be painting my background. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are white, brown, and black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a medium gray tone that I'll be utilizing for the majority of the background, but I'm gonna have it a little bit lighter at the top and a little bit darker at the bottom. So what I'm gonna first do is pre-mix that medium gray, and I have miraculously done it off camera so you can see where I'm headed to. So this is a nice neutral kind of warm mid-tone gray. What I did was I first separated out some of my brown because I'm gonna need a little bit of my brown later in the process so I don't wanna mix up all of my brown. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix just a little bit of white and just a touch of black into some of my brown. What this is gonna do is it's gonna provide me with a nice neutral mid-tone gray. You might want yours a little bit more grayer, and in, in that case, you can add more black and white. You might want it lighter, which means you can add more white. Whatever kind of works for you, I actually think I need a little bit more, so I'm gonna just kind of mix myself up a little bit more so I don't run out through the painting process. And you wanna make sure that you have yourself a good amount, so again, so you don't run out of paint <laughs> during the painting process and you can just pre-mix as much as you'd like to and then once you've got it in the shade that you want know that it will go a little bit darker as it dries so just kind of in your head plan for that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe it, my brush off on the side of my palette and I'm going to pick up some white paint with my dirty brush. I'm going to start the top of my canvas with both of these colors white and gray on my brush at the same time and what this is gonna do is it's gonna provide me with a little bit of atmospheric dimension in my, um, in my background to allow for the top to look a little bit lighter, maybe in, um, kind of implicate that there is a light source of sorts somewhere in the atmosphere. Now what I'm gonna do without washing my brushes, I'm just gonna pick up that pre-mixed gray color that I made and I'm just gonna paint the rest of the canvas with this gray color. I do get it to blend in with that lighter area up at the top. So this way it gives me just a nice kind of little bit of a gradient in through there. And then I'm just gonna bring this color all the way down to the bottom. Once I've got the whole canvas colored in, the rest of the canvas colored in with this gray color, what I'll do is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black paint and darken up the bottom of the canvas. So 
I'll cover it with the gray first, like I'm doing right now. And you can, it, gray covers pretty darn well, so you may not um, need to or want to do a second coat on this, but you'll see from time to time, I just kind of rub it back and forth just to make sure that I have a nice good coverage um, throughout the area. But you, with gray, gray covers pretty well, so the directional brush stroke is not super important. I'm getting down to my bottom now, just kind of scooping up the rest of my gray in through here and then just bringing it all the way down to the bottom. And once I've got it down to the bottom, I ran out, I gotta pre-mix myself just a little bit more here. I thought I had enough, but I was, not, I, I was a little shy on the quantity, there we go. So I've got it all the way down to the bottom and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black paint so I can give myself a little bit of a darker gradient down at the bottom. So I've got my gray on there. Now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush is I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of black paint. I'm gonna mix it in with this wet paint down at the bottom. So I've got wet paint down at the bottom mixed with some of my black. And then if you feel like you have too much paint on your brush, just kind of wipe it off on your paper towel. You don't have to wash it, just wipe it off on your paper towel. And you can just lightly blend up this darkness. So you might find that you want yours darker or lighter than mine. It's gonna be a visual preference on your part, but we will be utilizing our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got this blended in, you can, if you want, do a second coat on it, or you can leave it as is, because we've got lots of stuff that we're gonna be painting on top of it, and then you can just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline of our unicorn head with our piece of chalk. I do recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start this step. So this is the time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be guiding you through a series of shapes and dots and we'll connect the dots and hopefully by the time we're done we'll have the resemblance of a unicorn head. Um, we're not going for any fine-tuned detail at this point we're just going for some nice basic shapes so we can get um, we can have some area to color in in the painting process. So what I'm going to first do is guide you through a big circle that's going to be the start of the head. So I'm going to have my um, my neck up in through here and my head is gonna be kind of tipped down. So we have the horn of the unicorn is gonna come down here. So I'm gonna put the first circle is gonna be somewhere in this vicinity. So to find out or to figure out where you wanna start this circle, if you kind of find the center of your canvas and then go up about an inch and over about an inch, that can be your first marker. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come directly over from that and I'm about maybe three and a half inches away from the edge of the canvas the edge of the canvas my circle is about five and a half inches wide so something like that then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of cut the difference between these two right here and I'll go up about two and a half to three inches and then I'll go down about two and a half to three inches this just gives me kind of a nice barrier and then I'm just going to connect my dots I'm gonna make sure that I keep this in kind of a circular type of shape. When we have dots like this, sometimes what happens is we connect it with a straight line, which is that's not what you wanna do. You wanna make sure that you have it nice and circular. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but just something that'll get you um, started through the process. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another circle that's about half this size down in this vicinity. So if this is about five and a half inches wide, whatever the distance halfway is, is gonna be about the distance and the height of a circle down and through here. So I'm gonna come down from here about maybe an inch, inch and a half, somewhere in through here, that'll be about my top. Come down maybe a little bit to an angle of sorts or something like that. And then my right side will be somewhere in through here. So my right side is a little bit to the right of the right of this circle. So that gives you a good idea of where I have mine placed. And then do the same over here. Make yourself a circle like this. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect these two circles. So on this side, I'm gonna come right about um, in through here is where I'm going to start to disconnect my line and then I'm going to bring it a little bit curved in and then just kind of meet it 
with the outside of this circle in through here. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to have it meeting somewhere in through here like this and then bring it in through here. This um, bottom circle, I'm going to adjust a little bit because I want there to be a little bit of a nose um, to represent the shape of the unicorn's face or so something like that. And then I'll just bring it out just a little bit in this area. And these little bumps don't have to be perfect. Um, I do want a little bit of a nostril too, so just make sure that this has popped out just a little bit. If they're not exactly the way mine are, don't worry about it. We can adjust it during the painting process. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself the top portion of the head. So I'm going to come down the right hand side of my canvas about three inches. You're definitely a little higher than the top of the head. So if you come up from the top of the head, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, and over to the right, wherever it meets the edge of the canvas, that's a good spot. And then I'm going to have it meeting, I would say, somewhere like right al along this left-hand side of the head. So you can just kind of, wherever this halfway point is, just start to separate it. You want it to look like a nice continual arcing line. I'm going pretty high up to the top of my canvas, maybe about an inch away from the top of my canvas, and then just giving myself a nice continual arcing type of motion. And again, doesn't have to be perfect, but just something that'll help us through that painting process. Then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a separating part from the body to whatever this background is. So I'm going to go uh, a little bit to the right of the center of my circle and just give myself a little bit of a curved line coming down towards the bottom of my canvas. Then I'm going to give myself a real loose kind of wavy line for the mane of the horse. So I'm going to just find my center of my canvas up at the top and maybe go to the right just a little bit from that. And then I'm just going to kind of bring it out to the left and just give myself a real nice, long, wavy line that has a lot of movement to it. And that's going to be the exterior shape of my mane. And that's all I'm going to be doing for um, my outline. So you can put your chalk away. We'll be using the large brush for the next step so you can get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the neck and this little chest area of the unicorn. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to use are black, my pre-mixed gray, white, and a little bit of yellow as well. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm going to be putting a nice shadowy area um, on this front part of the chest or underneath the, the face or head in through here. And then I want to give some um, almost curved little wrinkles along the side of the head so it will imply that this head is really being tipped down and it's going to give us some great movement to the body and then we'll put a nice big highlight on the top. So during this step I'm concentrating on just kind of blending my colors out. I'm going to be using a nice loose um, painterly stroke but I'm going to start with my dark colors and work my way to the light. So I've got my large brush. I'm going to put a little bit of black paint on my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm in essence going to outline the edge of my horse's face, or my unicorn's face. I know it's a kind of a, a, a horse type shape. So if I call it a horse accidentally, I apologize. So I'm going to just kind of bring this down in through here with a little bit of black on my brush. This is where you get to kind of shape that, um, that little muzzle area, whatever way works for you. And then I just kind of, if I have a lot of paint on my brush, I'll just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and blend this out into the um, the neighboring gray area. I will be adding more gray in a minute to get it to blend even more, but this just starts the process so I have kind of a soft edge leading into that gray area. And then right about uh, right about halfway up this circle is when I'm going to start to kind of pull this out. I'm going to put a tiny bit more black paint on my brush, pull this out in these curved type of lines. So I'm curving it around like the jaw area and just kind of bringing it up. I don't need to go too far. I don't need to do too much. Just giving it that um, that motion to allow it to um, show that it is bent. Now what I'm going to do without washing my brush, I'm going to pick up some of my gray and I'm just going to get this to blend in down in this corner down and through here. I'm going to bring it all the way to my little chalk mark so I can have a nice stopping point for the front of that chest 
And then I'm just going to utilize this scrubbing type of technique to get these colors to blend in with one another. If you find that you, you're not as successful as you thought you would be with blending this um, mid-tone gray into the into the darker area, you can certainly do multiple layers. Whatever works for you to get it to blend in is totally fine. I just keep picking up my gray right now in order to get these colors to start talking with each other and I'm kind of overlapping where I have that, that darkness for the shadow in through here and just making sure that they look like they're, they're blended in nice and well together, putting a little bit of this gray in between those wrinkles that we had just put in place. And now what I'm gonna do, now that that's pretty good, I think I might add a little bit more darkness in through here. I'm gonna pick up just a tiny bit more black just so it doesn't look like it's an outline right here. I just picked up a little bit more black so I can get this to, um, look as if it's kind of fading out without just being an outline. So that sometimes happens when you're doing these kind of shadows. You want it to look natural. You don't necessarily want it to look like you've just put an outline around a particular object. So I, I'm worried more about the shape of the, or the form of this piece in through here. So I just want to make sure that I make it look like it makes sense. So that that works out better for me, just getting that little bit more of a, um, of a gradual type of blend into there. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put a highlight on the top of that neck area. So my highlight, I want it to look a little bit lighter or different than the light gray that, um, that was created at the top of the canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take white and add just a teeny tiny bit of yellow paint into it. I don't necessarily want it to look super yellow, but I do want it to look like it's kind of a creamy color and it's not totally white. So if your yellow goes really, really yellow on you, you could certainly add a bit of brown to it to make it more of a tan color, but this is looking pretty good for me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe it off on the side of my palette. I do not need a lot of paint on my brush. So I'm gonna start up in through here, get this top area just basically started. And then what I'm gonna do, I feel like I have too much paint on my brush, so I'm gonna give it just a good squeeze in my paper towel. And then I'm gonna just get this brighter area to blend down into the darker area. So this is kind of um, allowing for the visual effect of this area to be illuminated by whatever the light source is and also giving you the form and the shape of the body. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit in through here and just make sure that it blends in nicely with this gray area. And if you feel like you want, once it dries, like that you want it to be brighter or you wanna have more depth to it, you can certainly just continue to add layers upon layers. Um, but I'm probably gonna let mine dry, see if I um, need to do anything more to it, but I'm feeling like this is looking pretty, pretty good. Maybe enhance these little wrinkles a little bit. And then we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting our facial features. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, yellow, white, and probably my gray color too. So the only color I'm not gonna use is pink on this one. So what I'm in essence gonna do is I'm gonna put my eye, my nostril, and my mouth in place, and then we'll, we'll come back and do some details to them. So I'm gonna put some black paint on my small brush. You could certainly um, chalk these in if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna do it with some paint here. So I'm gonna find kind of the center of my circle, which is somewhere in this vicinity. I'm gonna have my eye down just a little bit from that. I'm gonna make myself um, an arcing type of line coming down in this direction. I'm not gonna bring it as far to the right as that. So something like this, this is about maybe an inch and a half to two inches long. And then I'm gonna give myself um, like a little almond type of a shape inside of that. So this will give me the starting point 
of where I want my eye to go and we'll be building a whole bunch of details around it. This will give a, it in a good um, direction that it looks like the head is tipped downwards and we'll add some fun details to it in a minute. So that's going to be where I place my eye. My nostril is going to go right um, by the bottom portion of my of my um, face. So I'm going to have it in through here. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a curved line uh, curving in this direction and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm going to fade this line into the neighboring gray so I don't necessarily want this line to be just a big solid um, black um, shape. I want it to be kind of like we're it's going into the into the nose. So this way, if I do a solid line on the right side, and then I can just fade it out into that gray. If you need to, like I feel like I want to, I'm picking up some of my original gray just to get it to blend just a little bit more. You can of course go right over your chalk marks, and that way it'll look a little bit more natural than just having a solid um, a solid black line. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit more black paint on my brush. I'm going to give myself a mouth somewhere in this vicinity. My mouth I like to do nice and sketchily, so I don't have to, um, I don't really put too much detail on it. Just kind of put a little black line there. I'm picking up some of my gray just to get rid of some of this, uh, um, some of the chalk mark. We'll do more information around the face it, or around the bottom with our with our medium brush in a little bit. I'm just working on the, the features right now and we'll get rid of all of our chalk in a little bit. So that was just blending it out into the, into the gray. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna go back up to the eye. And what I'm gonna do in the eye is I'm gonna first start by adding some color to it. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow paint and I'm going to give myself a colored part of the eye on this kind of top right hand side of it. So just making a little bit of this yellow visible. You don't need it to be too dramatic. You could even put a little brown in it. My yellow is gonna be translucent, so it's gonna um, take on different tones, be it light and dark, so that helps me with that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting some information around the eye. So I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown, black, and gray, all three colors on my brush at the same time, to give myself a little bit of information around the exterior of this eye. So I'm going into this little crevice in through here, giving myself some nice kind of details around the eye as if there's a little bit of skin there that is allowing for some dimension around um, the face. You can even bring a little bit down in this corner of the eye in through here. I'm also going to put a little bit above the eye. So black and gray is on my brush right now. And I'm gonna give myself just these loose kind of sketchily lines above that eye, which is gonna provide information of like an eyelid of sorts up in through here. So that's gonna to help to, again, give more definition. I'm picking up a little bit of black paint on my brush right now to give myself a few little eyelashes. So I'm just kind of pulling up in this back right hand corner some dainty little eyelashes you could certainly have yours really long you can have them really whatever um, way that you want I'm just gonna pull a few up in that corner and through there now what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, wash and dry my brush I want to put some sparkle in the eye so I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of my gray and really just a teeny tiny bit I'm gonna put a little bit of a shine on the um, on the eye itself with just a little bit of gray like that and now I'm picking up a tiny bit of white paint give myself a couple little sparkles down in this bottom left hand corner of the eye and then you can just kind of fiddle with it as much as you want if we'll be putting more um, information around the exterior part of the eye um, which will with our bigger brush but the eye itself, you can fiddle with it. We are gonna be using our medium brush for the next step, so once you've got this done, you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the face. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, 
gray, brown, and white. And what I'm in essence going to do is I'm going to put the um, highlights and shadows which are going to create the form of the face. So we'll be putting some highlights above the eye which will give the, um, the eye socket its shape up and through here. We'll be putting a little highlight on the almost the flat part of the front of the face in through here. We'll put a little bit of shadow down this back side of the muzzle and the jaw. And then we'll put a little bit of just gentle information, maybe a little highlight on top of the nostril um, and the front of the face in order to give it its look. So I'm going to work again from dark to light like I did for the neck area, the head, uh, the neck and the chest area. This is a step where I'm going to have very little bit of paint on my brush at all times because I know that I'm working in a really small area. I've got a pretty big brush, um, so to speak, for what I'm doing. And by using a little bit of paint on my brush, it's going to provide me with control throughout this area. So we already kind of have the information as to where this jawline would uh, reside. So that's where I'm, I'm going to be putting a shadow back in through here. So I'm going to pick up my gray, a teeny tiny bit of gray, and an itty bitty bit of black paint. So not much at all. I don't want this to go as dark as this. So I'm going to have the gray on my brush in order to um, control the intensity of it. I just picked up a little bit more of my gray just so I could make sure that I didn't um, go too dark. And then I just kind of keep working it in through here, making sure that I've got um, the area that I want. I want a little bit of shadow underneath here. So I'm just in essence kind of rubbing the paint in at this point to give myself a little bit of a darker area. I'm picking up a little bit more of my gray in order to get this back area to um, blend in over by that mouth that we had um, put in. And then I'm just gonna take the remnants on my brush and kind of rub it out in this area in through here. I will be picking up right now a little bit more of my original gray, just to make sure that I've got this area nice and um, blended and also that I get rid of any chalk marks along the way. So if you're going about it and you're like, oh my God, my chalk mark's still showing, just pick up a little bit more paint and just blend it out. The paint will help to hide those, um, those chalk marks. And again, I'm trying not to get this as dark as there. So I've got my shadow on in through here. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of um, the remnants that I have on my brush, which might be a little bit darker than the original gray, down in through here. Again, one to get rid of my chalk mark and also maybe just to add a little bit of uh, information down in through here. Maybe just rub it in this area as well. Give myself a little bit of, a little bit of darkest down there maybe a little bit down in through here. So just remnants on my brush right now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a tiny bit of a shadow right in front of the eye. Not much more, I have more of my original gray and just a teeny tiny bit of my black on my brush. So I just want a little bit of a kind of a contour dip in through here and then maybe underneath that eye as well. So these little nuances that I'm doing right now are gonna just help to provide good shape to, to that horse's head. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding my highlights. So I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of brown plus a teeny tiny bit of white paint. And again, I don't need a lot of paint on my brush. I wanna have kind of a brownish area on the front of this muzzle. So I have brown and white on my brush right now. And I'm gonna just kind of pull this up, this whole muzzle area in through here. I'm gonna add a little bit of lightness to it in a minute, but right now, just kind of getting this neutral type of color on here that I'm looking for. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more darkness down at the bottom of the nose. So I'm picking up a little bit more black and gray on my brush right now, just to kind of um, get this just a little bit darker in through here, that front little part of the nose, something like that. We're gonna have the mane behind it, which is going to allow for this area to really pop out. But right now I'm just kind of getting these colors on here. So I have um, the, look that, the look that I'm going for. And then I just picked up a little bit of my original gray again, just to make sure I've got this all colored in. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm 
I have too much gray on my brush. I'm going to pick back up my brown and white, but this time I'm going to pick up more white. So I have white with just a teeny tiny bit of brown paint on my brush to get this front area nice and light with maybe a little bit of that brown in there so it looks nice and, and earthy. A lot of this front area is going to be covered by the main, so don't worry about this being perfect. What I'm really just kind of looking to do is to get it to um, have a natural blend into the, um, into the gray color. So I, I want it to look highlighted so it looks like it's the front of the horse. And now I'm picking up some of my original gray just to get it to blend in. And I'm gonna just kind of pull this in through here, make sure that it all blends in. And if you run into an issue where you're like, oh my God, that was just too much paint. It's, I'm not able to control it the way that I want. Just let it dry for a minute. You don't have to um, muscle through this in the same exact order that I'm doing or the speed that I'm doing it. Just go at your own pace. If something happens and you're like, oh, I wanna you know, work on it a little bit more, then feel free to do so. Picking up a little bit more white to give myself a little bit of a highlight on top of this nostril, maybe a little bit more brown as well. I like the white and the brown to give me this nice neutral kind of natural look to it. Maybe just make sure I've got that same color on the other side so it looks like it is in fact the same nostril or the, you know, the same kind of makeup of the, the colors of the horse. And then I'm gonna add the same kind of lightness up and through here. So again, I'm just going for brown with a little bit of white paint on my brush to give myself a little bit of a highlight in through here. Then I wipe my brush off, I pick up some of my original gray and just give myself the jawbone, allow, allowing for that to just kind of pop out and make it make sure that it's got a little bit of dimension to it. Again, the ears are gonna be up at the top. We don't need to do too much to that. I'm gonna bring a little bit of this down in through here also to give myself maybe that muscular type of look to the face in through here. So little highlights and stuff can, can help to add that in um, the structure of a unicorn or a horse face. I just picked up a little bit of my original gray just to get this to blend in just a little bit. And then I just need to do a little bit um, on that eye socket area up and through here. So a teeny tiny bit of white paint on my dirty brush and just gonna add this little bit of a highlight up and through here and just make sure that it does it blends out into that original gray. And you can certainly amp it up a little bit if you want, just put a, keep adding just a tiny bit of white paint onto it wherever you feel like it would pop out the most. And then you just blend it out into the neighboring gray. And then just fiddle with this all you want. We're not doing anything in through here yet because the mane is gonna go on there and we're gonna have a lot more information to, to disguise that area. So you can get this done and then we're going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So you can just put this medium brush away, fiddle with this as much as you need to, and take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the mane. So I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, I might use some gray, probably not, but I might use some gray, yellow and white. So definitely black, brown, yellow and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it really dark underneath here as if it's being all shadowed. I'm gonna have a little bit of um, a shadowy area where the mane kind of flips over. I'll have it a little bit darker where the ears are gonna go in through here and then I'm gonna have it lighter as it gets towards the exterior. There's gonna be in essence kind of two sections of the mane. The, it'll be the main mane, <laughs> the big part behind, and then we'll call them the bangs, <laughs> the ones that are gonna come in, in front of the face. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint on my brush. So what I'm in essence gonna do is I'm gonna first just kind of outline my face. So I've got black paint on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of bring this down right along the edge of my face. And you can, you know, do any little reshaping that you want to your face right now because you've got the ability to do that with the black on your brush. And then I'm just gonna kind of, and if you needed to um, pull out a smaller brush to get in these little crevices, feel free to do so. So once I've got that outline, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna pick up any more paint. What I'm in essence gonna do is I'm just going to utilize the remnants of the um, black paint on my brush 
to give myself this really just um, soft kind of transition from the dark to um, what's going to be the lighter hair over here on the left hand side. So I've just got a little bit of the black on my brush and I'm really just kind of rubbing it in which is going to allow me to have some light spots and some dark spots which I will utilize to my advantage when I go to put on the other colors. So just kind of letting myself run out of paint in through here making sure that that looks nice and natural and through there just getting it all the way up there we go and then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pick up without washing my brush I'm going to pick up some brown paint so I have rem remnants of black and now I'm picking up a tiny bit of brown paint and I'm going to wipe it off on the side of my palette so I don't want much at all what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and I'm going to start the um, the sections of the the mane as it's coming off of the head or off of the neck so I'm, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to kind of give myself I'm trying to get my hand out of the way here I'll give myself a little bit of an outline as it is um, touching the the neck and then I pull it up in a curved way coming out as I feel that it would be coming off the head so I don't need a lot of paint here I'm just using little bits on my brush in through here is where it's going to kind of cross over into where the ears are going to be so just kind of bringing it in that direction I also am going to have it coming down um, in front of the face I need a little bit more paint right now because I'm running out so I just picked up a little bit more brown I didn't pick up black yet or any more black um, this is we're going to be putting the ears on later but right now I'm just getting the um, the information where I want it I think I am gonna I'm picking up a tiny bit more black I want this to go a little bit darker in through here so I just picked up a little bit more black paint and I'm just bringing this down as if um, it it's coming naturally from the other side of the head there's gonna be a big ear in through here so I'm just giving this dark area in through here maybe pulling this down just a little bit down that front region I do need a little bit of this um, darkness back here so again just kind of outlining the um, neck area and then just pulling it up loosely with um, with the tips of this bristle brush and then once I've got that on now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some brown paint and I'm going to I didn't wash my brush I'm going to start giving myself these longer streaks down in through here so without washing my brush I picked up brown paint and this is where I'm working my way towards the light. I do know that I'm going to have my a little bit lighter um, hair in through here, which will be that bangs area that I was talking about. But I'll tackle that in a minute. So right now, just picking up a little bit more and a, a little bit um, more quantity of the brown and just bringing this down in through this direction. And then I'm going to bring just a little bit up top as well because I want to um, slowly work my way towards the light and the light is going to be on the exterior picking up just a little bit more brown to um, identify this front piece in through here so a little bit more brown I'm going to bring it kind of down right up maybe a little bit in front of this dark area and through here as if it's falling down the face in this direction and I can use the corner of my brush to get these more wiggly type of pieces so it's not so um, straight and as if it's just laying down the front now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush so I want to start working my way into the light area of the main so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush but I have to lean over because I've dropped my paper towel <laughs> so hold on one second let me get my new my paper towel that's fallen on the floor okay so I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm going to go in for the lighter um, hair. I'm going to start with this um, light yellow color that we used. So we used white with a touch of that yellow. And I'm going to utilize that to start these lighter pieces. So white with a touch of yellow. And I'm going to bring just like the corner of my brush is what I'm using right now to provide me with the, the lightness of this. I'll intermingle it with a little bit of the brown in a minute, but right now just kind of almost reversing the direction and getting it to intermingle with that, um, that brown that we've already started. And I'll probably pick up a little bit of brown as well in a second. 
but this just kind of gets me going. Same thing on the main or the bangs part in through here, just a little bit of this yellow white type of mixture. This is all gonna again work itself around those ears. And now I'm gonna pick up without washing my brush some brown just to get this to intermingle. You can have yours as wavy or as smooth as you want. It's gonna be totally up to you. You can have yours more brown or more yellow. Maybe you want yours more of a golden type of look. Totally up to you. I'm going just for a nice soft neutral type of appearance on mine. Again, I have my dirty brush. I picked up a little bit of brown, just intermingling all of these in with one another. And then what? We, after we put our unicorn horn and the ears, we'll do little details around um, these front pieces, but right now just kind of working with my brown and that light yellow just to pull down a couple of more beautiful pieces in through here. And then I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of white in a second to give myself one final little sparkly layer of the um, main right on the outside. So without washing my brush, I'm picking up just a teeny tiny bit of white paint and just giving myself these beautiful highlighted little pieces along the edges and getting them to intermingle just a little bit. And then I'll just fiddle with it. So you can certainly let yours dry, see if you have as much highlight in there as you want. Definitely have the top, the lightest, and then once you've got it done, we're gonna be switching to our uh, medium brush for the next step. So you can put your large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint a horn and some ears. <laughs> I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are brown, black, white, pink, and maybe that light yellow color that we made as well. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna paint a base coat for my horn. I'm gonna put um, brown paint on my brush. I'm gonna have my horn starting right about here and it's gonna end right about here. So this is a little bit above my, actually you could kind of come at the top of your eye and to the left. That's where I've got kind of the start of it. And then if you go up about an inch and a little bit to the left of that, that's where the widest part of my horn is somewhere in through there. And then I'm gonna make myself a dot where I want the point of it to be. I always like to have somewhere I'm headed to. So mine is right, uh, my dot is right about here, but to tell you, to, so you can figure out where, where that is, I've got it about halfway up the face and I am maybe about an inch and a half away from the edge of my canvas. I'm just gonna connect these with a the longest triangle you've probably ever seen. <laughs> but you can have it, you know, little pointy on the end if my, my end was a little bit on the rounder side, but you can certainly point yours. And I'm just gonna connect here to here, and then this one is gonna be connected to the same point. If you felt that you wanted a smaller brush as you're getting towards the, um, towards the skinnier end of the um, horn, feel free to just pull out a smaller brush if you want to. And then I'm just gonna kind of paint this in with brown paint. Before I go to my ears, I am gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint in order to get this to have a little bit of a darker um, part as it's coming out of the head. So I'm just kind of giving myself a little bit of a dark area in through here. We'll put a couple of pieces of um, mane on top of it, but just a little bit of darkness to get that to transition into the head. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up some of my light yellow. So that would be the white plus a teeny tiny bit of that um, yellow and I'm gonna have my ears in through here. So um, wherever you have the, the top of the head over here where it meets the, um, the neck area, I just put a little bit of a dot in through there and then I'm just gonna pull this down in a curved line like that and I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side. And I want this to have a little bit of texture to it so I'm just gonna kinda tap my my brush like that. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown paint right now just to get a little bit of a, um, of a transition 
transitional color so it's not just one solid color and again we'll put little pieces of the mane around it and I'll put a little dark spot in a second I'm gonna do the other ear the same way pick up some of that light yellow I've got this one coming out over in through this direction this one's gonna stop at this hairline in through here so you don't want it to go um, further than that I'm just gonna pull this down in this little bit of a um, triangle type of a shape I'm going to pick up now a tiny bit of my brown paint to work that in so again we don't have a solid color here and then once I've got that done I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of I wiped my brush off on my paper towel I'm picking up a tiny bit of black paint and I'm going to give myself the inside of the of the ears so just a little tiny dark sliver of um, of an area coming in this direction in through here and then I'll just do a little tiny sliver in through here it doesn't have to be totally black I just am looking for something dark to be representational of the inside of the ear and I'm just kind of tapping it in something like that and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my medium brush and I'm gonna start decorating my horn so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put um, dark marks down at the bottom with black paint so if you felt again like you wanted to use a smaller brush feel free to do so but I'm gonna be using my medium brush black paint and I also put a tiny bit of water in my paint and what I like to do is I'll spin my brush on the side of my palette that's gonna give me a nice pointy tip and it's gonna allow me to have some nice fluidity in my brush in order to do what I want to do so I'm gonna give myself these little organic kind of curved marks along the bottom side of my horn so you can pull it out a little bit farther than um, or give the illusion that you're pulling it out a little bit farther than the um, footprint that you had originally done so this way it gives it the illusion of having um, shape to it so something like this and I'm just kind of bringing these little curved lines like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to do the opposite with a highlight on the top of it so I'm going to be using brown white and pink so I'm going to use all three colors on my brush at the same time so I have brown pink and white so because I didn't pre-mix a color I'm going to get these great varieties of little tonal changes throughout this and then I'm going to go on the top side and I'm going to bring my curved line kind of in between those darker areas that we just did so I'm just kind of reversing what um, the motion that I did for the dark areas and pulling this lighter color in and of course you could have your horn whatever color you want if you wanted yours to be more vibrant than mine then certainly pull in some more pink if you want it to be darker or purple or whatever color that you want it's your unicorn horn you make it whatever color that you would like and then you can just kind of fiddle with it as much as you want and now what I'm gonna do that's looking pretty good it's a fancy horn um, what I'm gonna do next is I am going to just make sure that right around my horn and my ears looks like it is fully um, surrounded by the mane so I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush and this is where I'm just gonna be pulling some little um, strands of hair so you can pick brown yellow white whatever um, color combination that you want and then I'm just gonna kind of make sure that I've got some nice hairs over here I think I'm gonna put a, I put a little bit of black paint on my brush too just to make sure that I have the um, little singular pieces as well so black will definitely help to provide you the little shadows in between areas maybe a little bit of darkness on this other side of the ear to make it look like it's coming um, out from somewhere and then you can just kind of pull these longer pieces down using a little bit of water on your brush will help you to get these more singular type of pieces um, if you feel like you want lighter pieces go into your white and your brown so it'll just be you know a personal preference on your part wherever you feel that you need to enhance I just picked up a little bit of white to give myself a bit of a little more highlight in through here hide the edges of the horn itself with some little light pieces so have fun with that and when you feel like you're all done we are going to be utilizing our small brush I just picked up some brown and we're going to use our small brush for the next step so you can just get ready 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for our fairy. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are brown, pink, yellow, white, and some black as well. So what I'm in essence gonna do is I'm gonna put some basic shapes on for her body um, and her wings, and then we'll build her um, appendages after that, her legs and her arms and her head. So I'm gonna pre-mix myself a nice dark burgundy or magenta-y type of color that I'm gonna use for the base for my wings and my dress. So I've already kind of pre-mixed it here so you can see where I'm headed. What I in essence did was I just took some of my pink and added a little bit of brown to it. So this just kind of deepens that tone and it's gonna allow us for a nice complementary color to what we did in the, um, in the horn. So once I've got this done, I'm gonna um, just be sketching or making my shapes with paint, but you could certainly, again, use chalk or a pencil to outline yours yourself. So uh, the first shape I'm gonna make is what's gonna look like a long bell type of shape. <laughs> this is gonna be for her body and her skirt. So I'm gonna come up my horn maybe about two inches or so, and then I'm gonna come down from that about an inch and a half. Give myself a little bit of a marker. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down about, I would say about two inches from that, give myself another little marker. That's gonna be the top and the bottom of this shape that we're making. So I don't need it to be um, much wider than like a half of an inch to an inch. So I'm just kind of making myself a little bit of a rounded top and then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna kick it out down at the bottom on both sides. So this, this right side is um, for her, the front of her body. So if you wanted her to have more of a chest or if you wanted it to be shaped any differently than mine, feel free to do so. And then I'm just gonna kind of ripple this bottom edge. This is the bottom of her skirt. So this is, to me, looks kind of like a bell type of a shape. Um, yours might turn out a little bit different than mine, but this is how I'm describing the shape to be. Uh, if you want her to have a bigger skirt, feel free to do so. I'm just going for this nice, fun type of a shape and just I'm um, blending it in or making it so it's a nice, thin coat so it doesn't take too, too long to dry on me. So once I've got that done and it's the shape that I want, I'm going to be utilizing the same color for the base of my wings. So I'm gonna have, if this, this is in essence kind of the top of her torso. So I'm gonna have um, a nice big wing kind of coming out in this direction, in through here. They're gonna meet her back, so somewhere in through here. You can have yours whatever shape you want. Yours can be bigger or smaller than mine. It's gonna be whatever is visually appealing to you. And when I color in the wings, I'm going to not be concerned about doing a full coverage. If you can see some of that gray behind there, that's great. Don't worry about that at all. This is just, I like my wings to kind of be on the little translucent side anyway, so I'm not concerned about that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of come from that same spot on the back and I'm gonna give myself the other wing, which is gonna be behind the horn. So something like this is gonna give me my other wing. I'm just gonna kinda of give myself um, the color up in through here, making sure it looks like it's going behind the horn and not um, around it. And then when I get to where it meets the other wing, if you need to, you can certainly just leave yourself a little bit of space between them. We're gonna be putting little shadows on in a, in a minute that will help to um, identify those as separate from one another, but you can leave a little space um, temporarily. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some bottom wings on. So again, I'm gonna start in the same spot in through here, and I'm gonna have mine coming way far down in through here. So you can uh, you know have yours shaped whatever way that you want, but I like mine to be nice and long and flowy, so I'm gonna have 
these bottom ones long and a little bit more narrow or seemingly a little more slender than those top ones because they're so long. And so this is the one that's on our side. And then I'll put another one coming out from the underside of her. So, or the other side. So just something like this. And of course, again, you could leave a little space if you wanted to. And I'm just gonna bring this one down in a similar type of place to where I brought the other one. So those are gonna be my wings. Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to put um, the head area on. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna have her um, with dark long hair. So I'm using a little bit of black paint on my brush right now. And I'm gonna come above um, my bell type of shape almost halfway between here and my um, horn. So somewhere right about here is where I've got it. So maybe about three quarters of an inch away from the um, the horn itself. And I, right now I'm just gonna kind of give myself a long type of oval shape for um, the head. We're gonna put lots more details on in a little bit, but I'm just kind of giving myself uh, a basis to start that she's going to have hair going all in front of her. She's going to have, you know, lots of more information, but this is just going to get me started with this um, hair process. And then once I've got that done, I'm going to wash and dry my brush again and I'm going to make myself a skin color. So washing and drying my brush. I've pre-mixed the skin color so you can see where I'm headed. So this is the color I'm going for. I got to there by using a little bit of yellow, a little bit of pink, a little bit of brown, about equal parts of those three colors will um, bring you in a good way. And then a touch of white paint in the mix as well. And then I just start spinning it around. And if it's like that feels to be a little too yellow, I add a little bit more pink and I just kind of keep adjusting it until I feel like I have a nice fairy skin color, whatever shade that may be that is a, that you like. I think I want a little bit more pink in it and you just kind of keep adjusting it until you feel it's as good as you want it to be. And then once you've got it into the um, way that you're looking for, I'm going to uh, put some arms and legs and a little a little button nose on. So I've got my, my skin color. So my legs, I'm going to consider right about here to be her, her waist somewhere in this vicinity. So to me, that tells me that her um, rear end is kind of right about here. So I'm going to have the um, legs kind of coming out in this direction with her knees somewhere about here. So we're going to do just kind of stick legs right now <laughs> so we can kind of get this on here. So I'm going to start about halfway in through here and I'm going to just bring this out in a diagonal type of way and then I'm going to bring it back in this diagonal to right about here. So this is just um, kind of setting the stage as to where I want that first leg to be. I need it to be wide enough to make sense. So I, I, if this is her bum underneath here, I'm gonna bring this leg back and just give her a little bit more width to um, that leg. And don't worry if your color isn't perfect yet because we will be able to um, modify that as we go through the process. So that would be the, the thigh. Then what I'm gonna do, this is the tip of the toe. So I need to do a little bit of a calf muscle. So I'm gonna bring the calf muscle about two thirds of the way down that leg. Then I'm gonna make a little tiny um, foot. So this is the heel of her foot in through here. And then this is the little front of her foot. And then I would just kind of keep um, fiddling with it. I need to give her her other leg as well. Her other leg is um, partially hidden by this leg here. So I'm just going to kind of go from this knee area and give another diagonal line about as long as this one in through here. So just a little skinny diagonal line is going to give me her the making of her leg. That's getting a little bit wider than I wanted, but that'll be a good part for her calf muscle. So something like that. And then I have her, her foot, I want to be about the same size. So I put the, give the little um, heel wherever I feel is appropriate. And then her calf muscle, of course, would be 
sim similar to the first one. And then you can just kind of blend the, the knee part in with one another. I need to give her an arm that is reaching up above um, her head and holding on to the horn. So I'm just going in the center of her head and giving myself a vertical line, something like this. And you might find that, it, it, you know, as you go through this process, if the arm looks a little long, if there's too much space, you can adjust the height of her as much as you want. I'm going to just put a couple little dots up at the top here to represent her, her fingers of sorts. And when we go to do the highlights and stuff, that'll make sense. I'm going to put a teeny tiny little colored uh, skin dot where I think her nose would be poking out from her beautiful hair. I think I need a little bit more paint on my brush if we all want to see it. So just a little tiny dot will give me that. And then I need her arm that's on this side of the body. So you, your paint um, might be a little bit wet right now if the base coat of there, if it is, don't worry about it. We will um, just paint right through it and we'll make adjustments um, later when we do the highlight. So I just go from her shoulder area, I'm bringing it down. Um, I always think of my, my own anatomy when I'm doing something like this. So my elbow is right around my waist type of area. And then she's got her little forearm kind of kicking out to the side like this. And then I've got her little hand just kind of up, stretched up like she's really excited about meeting this cute unicorn. And then we are going to utilize the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, make any adjustments that you want, and then you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our fairy. I'm going to use my small brush. We're going to be doing highlights and shadows. The colors I'm going to be using are pink, brown, white, and black and maybe some of my skin tone or that pre-mixed magenta that we had. So really what I'm looking to do on my wings is add some shadows and highlights. So shadows are gonna be in this area where it's kind of meeting the body and little highlights are gonna be on the edges and then just some free spirited kind of brush strokes. The shadows for her are gonna, I'm gonna have a shadow behind her back, some shadow on her leg underneath her dress. I'm gonna have highlights on her skin where I feel that it's popping out the most, maybe on her little forearm here and her nose, and then we'll add some more hair to make sure that it's all nice and voluminous. So I'm gonna start with some brown paint. Oh, so I, I'm gonna use, I might not, not told you the colors, brown, black, pink, um, white are my colors. So I'm gonna start with brown and black on my brush. I'm giving myself a little bit of a shadow on the inside of my wings. So I'm just kind of going wherever it meets her back and I'm pulling out a little bit of darkness. So it's gonna give me a nice transition into the brighter tones as I work my way towards, towards the tips of them. So right now I'm gonna have to start working around this little hand, which is fine. If you bump into it, don't worry. We've got a little highlight we'll do on that hand as well that'll help you to um, correct anything that might have gone wrong. Now I'm going to pick up some pink paint and give myself some of these beautiful um, second tone throughout the throughout the wings. And again, if you bump into your horn, you can certainly um, make any little corrections that you need to. So just pink paint on my brush at this point. Um, I didn't wash my brush after I did the shadows, so if I do have a little bit of brown on my brush, it's just intermingling and just putting a little bit of the pink. Now I'm picking up pink plus white, and this is going to give me an elevated, nice little pop of a highlight on the tips of the wings. And of course, or on the edges that I feel deserve the, the brightest of the bright highlights. You can certainly make yours as bright as you want, as, as spirited as you want. It's totally up to you. These are your fairy wings. You make them as exciting or as subtle as you want them to be. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if I can ever stop painting the fairy wings, <laughs> I'm going to um, work on the the dress because it's a pretty similar color palette. So I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow on her back. So black and brown is what I'm starting with. And underneath this arm in through here, I'm going to put a little bit of that black and brown, give myself a nice dark shadow 
over on this underside or the back side of her. I'm just picking up just a little bit more black so I can get a little bit darker in through here. And then I just keep wiping my brush off on my paper towel so I can get this nice shadow in the kind of crook of her back. You can pull the shadow down her um, whole backside if you want. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the black and brown, put a tiny bit of a shadow underneath her skirt onto her leg and even the backside of her leg coming in through here and just get it to blend into that skin tone a little bit. This will give you um, a nice uh, a nice effect. You could even put a little bit underneath um, this knee in through here on that calf muscle. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put any highlights that I want on her dress and her skin. So washing and drying my brush. I'm going to utilize my um, I think I'm going to go in for my the pre-mixed magenta color that we did as the base coat, plus a little bit of white. This will give me a little bit of a highlight on the edge of her dress. And again, you could make it as bright as you want. You could go into the, the um, fluorescent pink if you wanted to go exactly the same color as the um, wings themselves. But I'm going a little bit duller for, uh, for a color on um, the dress than the wings were. So I didn't bring any of the um, fluorescent pink into here, but you certainly could. And then I'm gonna um, wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna go in for some highlights on the skin. So I'm gonna start with just white paint. I'm gonna put a little highlight on maybe the knee, maybe the touch on the calf. And then I pick up, what I do is I put the white and then I pick up my skin tone. So I'll utilize the lightness on my brush and maybe those a couple of strategic spots on the skin plus the skin tone. So I start with just white and then I work in or I blend out into the base skin tone. And these are really small areas, so you don't need to do a ton in order to have a pretty realistic effect in such a small area. But you know, wherever you feel that the brightest would be, like I feel totally feel like the knee would be the brightest. So I just kind of keep elevating that light color right on that um, right on that one area, and then just kind of blend it out. And if you ever do it where you feel it's too much, just give it a minute, let it dry, and then you can come back with um, with the regular skin tone or you know whatever you need to do for adjusting. I'm going to do the same thing on the shoulder. So a little bit of white is um, on my brush. So I've got the shoulder or the whole arm, I should say. I've got white to uh, um, illuminate that, picking up some of my skin tone just to make sure that it, it blends in nicely. And I don't need to do the whole thing. I just am looking to give these strategic little sh or highlights. I'm going to go on the forearm a little bit with a touch of um, white, then maybe a little bit on the top of her hand. And then once I've got it you know, designated where I want the highlights. Now I just pick up that skin tone and get it to, to blend in. And again, it's a really tiny area. You don't, you don't need to do much. I just put a little thumb on there <laughs> and, you know, let it dry. See if there's any additional, um, you know, little tweaks you want to do. I got to put a little bit on her forearm that's holding onto the horn. So a tiny bit of white paint is on my brush, a little tiny light area there, maybe even on her little fingers up at the top. Now I'm picking up some of my skin tone just to get it to blend in. And then of course, if I had any little adjusting, ooh, maybe a little tiny dot on the tip of her nose too. A little tiny dot uh, on the tip of her nose, maybe a little, maybe a little more white so we can see it. Little tiny, tiny dot, there we go. And now I'm gonna just add some hair. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm going in for some brown right now and I'm gonna add just a lot of hair. You can you can make her head look a little bit bigger if you need to. You can pull some hair down her dress. I'm picking up um, a little bit of black paint too right now. Just going to bring some down by her arms, maybe just kind of little squiggly lines. You can have it really long and curly or long and straight. I'm going to bring some down her back. Right now, again, I'm just kind of using black paint um, to get this uh, beautiful head of hair on here. If you, again, feel that you need to extend it, like I felt like her head needed to be a little bit 
or I wanted the, the hair to come out a little bit further on the back side in through here. So have fun with that. Maybe a little bit in this front area as well. I'm going to pick up a touch of brown and white. Uh, not much white, just a teeny tiny bit in order to give myself a couple of little highlights in the hair. So a little bit of brown and white can just give you a little bit of movement in that hair. You could have her having blonde hair or, you know, short hair, whatever you want. And then you just make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel are necessary. And we are going to be utilizing our me uh yeah, our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some bubbles and sparkles. <laughs> I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are pink and white. So I'm going to be making a lot of just like bubbly, um, translucent, spherical type of shapes in through the middle and then I'm going to have a lot of sparkles up at the top, which is exactly what happens when you put a unicorn and a fairy together, is you get bubbles and sparkles. <laughs> a whole bunch of magic. So my pink paint that I use is transparent or translucent. So I'm going to be using that first to do the bubbles. You, if your pink is not translucent, you can add a little bit of water to it or a little bit of liquid medium so you can see through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a very little bit of pink paint on my brush. And I'm just going to start working it around in these circle type of shapes. I let myself run out of paint so that way some of them are going to be more dramatic than others. I'm going to do lots of different sizes. You can have big ones, you can have little ones, you can cross them over into your unicorn itself so that way it looks like they are just floating all around. You can put them wherever you want. You can have as many as you want. You can put them little ones and big ones and, you know, oddly shaped ones if you want. You don't have to have them exactly as mine. I like doing, when I'm doing stuff like this too, having some kind of go off the canvas. That's going to give you kind of a, a larger um, spatial range for, for viewing purposes. So you can certainly do that if you want to. And I, when I'm doing these, if I want them to be kind of a real symmetrical shape, I like my hand to kind of take over and steer. And I just kind of go in a fast circle that allows me to get a pretty natural circle type of a shape. Um, but that's just one of my little tricks that I do. And then I'm putting a couple in through here. You can even cross them over. I'm thinking that that's pretty good. Maybe, maybe a couple more down in through here. Make sure that we've got enough representation of the pink bubbles. <laughs> Once I've got them um, identified where I want them to go, I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint with my pink, and I'm going to give some of them a little bit of an extra boost of brightness. So you can take and just add a tiny kind of um, glimmer of a, of a little bit more of a lightness by just putting a little bit of white in there. You could even spin it around if you want it to be a full circle of that lightness or you can just kind of put it in part of that bubble and that'll make it look like it's almost got a reflective type of quality. So that's again totally up to you. So once you've got your pink bubbles in as many places in as much as you want. Maybe I want a couple more right around her as if, you know, maybe she has something to do with the bubbles, with the pink um, magical bubbles. Oh, this one I think I need to work on a little bit. Maybe you put two next to each other. There we go. That one was a little messy, so we'll have two next to each other. There we go. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put a whole bunch of sparkles on. So my sparkles are going to be predominantly just white dots. So I've got my um, white paint on my medium brush. I'm going to put a lot of just chaotic white dots everywhere. I'm putting my sparkles more towards the top of my canvas, um, uh, maybe almost insinuating that the sparkles come from the 
the unicorn and the bubbles are coming from the fairy and they're just meeting in, in between, but you can imagine yours to be whatever that you want. So I'm doing a bunch of different um, sized sparkles. You can even have them behind or in front of your bubbles. And I'm gonna put a couple down in through here, just again, to make sure that they all look like they're, you know, working together and living together and sparkling together. Maybe a couple down past the unicorn horn. And then once I've got as many on as I want, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a couple of them shine like they are in fact sparkles. And all I do for that is I'm gonna take my white paint and I'm gonna do like a little starburst. So I just find whatever one I want to make um, fancy and or sparkly, and then I just pull out these little, almost like starbursts. If you wanted to use your small brush to do um, the, the sparkly or the starburst part, feel free to do so. I just kind of put my brush in the center of that mark and then just pull it out um, into, into a sparkly into a sparkle. <laughs> I don't have any other explanation for it other than that. So you can um, make as many sparkles as you want and then maybe even have one coming from the top of the canvas. So that'd be cool if you just kind of pulled a partial one down from the top, make give, give it a little bit more shininess. And then once you've got these done, we, are, we have one little step left to go and it's gonna be with your small brush. So you can put this medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going bottom left on this one, and I think I'm gonna use that magenta color, her dress color, for my signature. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you would like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting, you get to sign it however you'd like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very magical image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.